Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 31st of October and happy Halloween. Uh, last year I dressed up as Superman and people said, hey, it's really not a good fit for you. You should probably dress up as Lex Luthor. So I've dressed up as Lex Luthor. Oh, you're probably asking, where's my costume? Let me just finish this. Hi, my name is Lex. Hopefully that completes the costume. Uh, as always, this is useful. Uh, hit like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. And hit that bell icon uh, to get notified of new updates. Speaking of costumes, just one really quick cool thing. Someone actually on LinkedIn, um, they dressed up as me um, for Halloween. So they are doing a MS Paint Masterclass. Uh, maybe I'll have to uh, consider that in the future. But that was, uh, that was pretty funny. Okay, moving on. So chapters as always, so you can go and check in the description or you can just click on the bottom, you can jump to a certain update if you care about a specific one. You don't have to go all the way through the video. New videos this week. So I did a deep dive into Azure Front Door, the layer seven global um, distribution service that offers a, a ton of great functionality. So I went into details about that. I did a little video about the new VS Code in the browser capability. So zero install really works across any kind of platform. And then I did do the Dallas Spartan uh, last Sunday. I did finish in eight hours 55. So I did a little race report and a video of all the kind of obstacles. Because I had the camera on, there were like no pictures of me through the course. There was literally one picture that got captured of me. So that's me doing the bucket carry. That was literally um, the only picture. But it was fantastic, uh, definitely recommend. There's lots of different distances. Uh, go and give one a try. So new features. On the compute side, so Azure Red Hat OpenShift is now available in the Gov Cloud. So remember there's different clouds. There's the commercial cloud we're all kind of used to. Then there's things like the China, Germany, and the different Gov Clouds. So now that Red Hat OpenShift, which is that partnership and operated between Microsoft and Red Hat, it's built on Kubernetes. But with Kubernetes, there's still a lot of elements I have to think about and manage and add on, whereas that Red Hat OpenShift is not an open source solution. It is provided by a company, and it's that kind of complete with its own interfaces and monitoring and deployment model, et cetera. So now available in Gov. Spot VM Try to Restore has now gone GA. So if you think about Azure, it has a ton of capacity. And when I create a VM, well, it has to have a lot of spare capacity, so I don't have to wait. Well, rather than letting that spare resource just not doing anything, it offers it to people at a reduced price. So you can actually go and create VMs to use this. So if I jump over super, super quickly, if I was just going to go, for example, and say, hey, I am going to go and create a new virtual machine. One of the options you kind of get is, hey, I want to do this spot instance. As you can see here, I'm doing this spot instance option right there. And then what happens is you can basically pick, well, when do I get evicted? I can set a certain price or, hey, only when it's capacity. And I can see a history of kind of what typical prices would be. And for the regions, what actually is that expected eviction rate? So it's actually pretty low. West US 3, it's even lower. It's a newer region. People probably aren't doing them as much there. But you get this ability to obviously, hey, I can use these spot VMs. But if it's because of capacity reasons, you could get kicked out. So what this new functionality actually does with this try and restore, as the name suggests, it will, if it's in a virtual machine scale set built on spot VMs and it's not using auto scale, then it will actually try to bring um, that instance back and it will use AI to bring it back in such a way as it's less likely to be evicted in the future. So it should have a longer life cycle um, than just a regular spot VM. So that try and restore is just a kind of a, a tick. And now for my virtual machine scale sets using spot that are not auto scale, hey, if it does get evicted because of capacity reasons, it will actually try and bring it back. And then when it brings it back, it should have a smaller chance of eviction. 
Um, Zerto DR for Azure VMware solution is GA. So this is kind of a third party disaster recovery service providing continuous data protection. And it works that it could be kind of your VMware on-premises to Azure VMware solution. It could be Azure VMware solution to another Azure VMware solution. It can even be Azure VMware solution to Azure kind of IaaS. So that is now GA. And there's now this wider VM ephemeral OS disk support available for more types of virtual machines. Um, if you think typically the way these things work is if I, if I look at a typical host, well, when I create a virtual machine, that virtual machine ordinarily for its OS disk, that's a managed disk. So it's actually out there, there's kind of that three copies, it's durable, it's persistent. But remember in that host also, there's kind of that local storage, which ordinarily, this is kind of SSD for pretty much all of the types. This is used for caching purposes, but also it kind of provides that temp drive. So it's non-durable, but it's really low latency. It's kind of high IOPS. And obviously it's there very, very quickly. So the ephemeral OS disk lets us take either some of the cache space um, or the temp space and actually run the OS on this instead. So now it's actually using that local storage and when I'm using that ephemeral disk. This has the benefit therefore that it's gonna provision faster. I'm not paying for a managed disk. I get that high IOPS and super low latency. But again, it's not durable. If the host goes down, I lose it. But if this is something like a virtual machine scale set that is just being built from some template, it's stateless, I don't care. I can just easily rebuild it. So what they've essentially done is now there are more um, virtual machines that can use this. Pretty much now, if it's a VM that supports premium storage, so all the kind of DS, the ES, the FS, the GS, the Ms, the DA, et cetera, um, they can now essentially use this. So again, if we jumped over to what we were just doing before, I can actually use this same demo. If we were to jump over to the disks page, you'll actually see under advanced, well, I have this ephemeral OS disk option. Now, it's not there because I never actually selected a decent VM SKU type. So if I undo the spot for a second and let's pick a bigger VM, you'll actually be able to see both options. So notice here for my ephemeral OS disk, I can actually pick do I want it using the OS cache or using the temp disk? There's actually a diff disk placement attribute of the configuration that lets me specify, hey, do I wanna use the cache or do I wanna use the resource disk, i.e. that temp drive? So additional kind of VM support and I get that kind of nice option as part of it. Okay. Moving on, on the networking side, Express Route private peering now has IPv6 support. So remember, private peering is all about the idea that, okay, um, we have the idea of Azure, and I have my VNet in a particular region. And remember, all of those Azure regions connect to that great big Microsoft backbone network. Well, that network is expanded in certain places to some kind of meet me, and I've got my location, and I'm using maybe a provider that I've got connection to that meet me as well. So that gives me connected to the Microsoft Backbone Network. I can connect to anything in kind of that geopolitical boundary or globally if I use premium. But then if we actually want to kind of resource, use things, we have an express route gateway and then on top of this, we can then add private peering. And that now is basically connecting the IP space of the VNet to that of my on-premises network. It establishes redundant BGP sessions. I have redundant connections. Uh, I've now connected this network to that network. Now, this was always IPv4 before, 
But now that private peering can also do IPv6. Uh, I can add it to an existing um, connection I have. I don't have to go and create a new one. So I can have an existing private peering. I go and add IPv6 to it. Remember the VNet is always dual stack. So it always has to be IPv4. It cannot just be IPv6. I can add IPv6 to it, but a lot of the Azure management plane uses IPv4. So I can optionally add IPv6, but I can't get rid of the IPv4. But now on my express route, hey, I can go ahead and add IPv6 to it as part of that private peering. So that is now GA. Um, private endpoint user-defined routes and network security groups are now available in additional regions. So remember, private endpoint is all about the idea that, hey, I have some resource, and I'll use the same picture, ordinarily that resource, maybe it's a storage account, storage account one, it has a public IP. What private endpoint does is now there's a, an IP address from my VNet that corresponds to that instance of a particular service. And I can actually use this from on-premises or any connected network as long as it gets the right DNS resolution. Well, previously, things like user-defined routes, i.e., hey, if this is my target, I want you to go here to some virtual appliance for the next hop. Or network security groups, hey, I want to control the flow of traffic or maybe block it going to this private endpoint would be ignored. They would not work. But now on the subnet level, I can actually turn on private endpoint network policies. So now UDRs and NSGs will be actually enforced for NFGs and enacted for UDRs. So now I could say, hey, if my target is PE1, actually send it to this network virtual appliance first. Or NSGs, hey, I don't want to allow access to this from this source. So I now have those capabilities and for my private endpoints. Now again, this is still preview, and what they've announced is essentially additional regions um, can actually do that. So if we go and look, it tells us about, hey, it's got all of those regions that it's essentially enabled that for. And as always, I'll put the kind of link to this uh, in the description below. So you can always go and check out the details. Storage side, so Azure Functions now has a new extension when it talks to Blob or Queues or Event Hubs or Service Buds or Event Grid. It can use this for triggers. I think it's gonna make the Azure Function actually run. Uh, and also for binding, something it wants to go and talk to to use. So there's a, this is using the latest Azure SDK. It's basically just an improved, I can use um, identity-based connections now, instead of having to use some access key, for example. So it's just an improved um, way to actually, from Azure Functions, interact with those types of storage. Miscellaneous, so Azure Data Explorer Cluster Advisor has gone GA. Remember, Azure Data Explorer is that super scalable, very fast data exploration service. I bring all my logs into it, all my telemetry into it, and then I can run analysis against it. The Custo query language, KQL, i.e. light log analytics workspaces. So now there are recommendations for these Azure Data Explorer clusters. Cost recommendations, right sizing, cache policy, auto scale, and performance recommendations, sizing, caching, operational excellence. And additionally, uh, in addition to the advisor, there are now insights. So the insights not only brings, hey, those advisor things to the forefront, but it adds things like comprehensive monitoring, views of performance, views of cash, cash usage, ingestion, overall usage. Um, I can get details on top users, top failures, all of that data through an insights experience. Log Analytics now has availability zone support in West US 2, i.e. distributing it over those um, facilities with independent power calling networking. It gives me a, a bigger protection from blast radiuses. And Azure Backup Archive tier is now available in the portal. So this is the idea that Archive is that super, super cheap. It's not available online. I have to bring it back into Call or Hot to actually read it, but it's really, really cheap. So now what I can do is from the portal rather than kind of command lines, I can take my backup snapshots and move them into that archive tier. 
Now, there are certain conditions on that. Um, it has to be monthly or yearly that are over three months old for VMs or 45 days old for SQL or SAP HANA backups. And it must have at least six months of retention left on that kind of snapshot. Um, so that archive tier, that's GA, I think for SQL and SAP, I think it's still preview for virtual machines. Azure policy for Azure Key Vault has gone GA. And you can actually go and see these. So if I jump over super quickly, um, once again, we're going to look in the portal. So if I actually just go to Azure policy for a second, and we look at our definitions, if we actually go and look at the category and we turn off all and just look at key vault, we can see there's a, a whole bunch of these available. I can have control about things like the key types I want to use, the key size, validity, just a whole bunch of policies. And Key Vault is so important now. If we really think about the idea that more and more, hey, we're bringing our own keys, they're going to get stored in Key Vault, encryption is this critical thing, I want to make sure I'm rotating keys, got the right configurations. Policy is the way to do that. It helps me enforce certain configurations. So definitely want to leverage that. Uh, then logz.io um, is now available in the Azure Marketplace. So this is a cloud observability platform. I can think about logs, metrics, tracing. And what I can now do with this integration with Azure, it actually has its own resource provider. It says a Microsoft.logz resource provider. So I can both onboard, I can provision the resources, I can get agents into the VMs really easily, I can do the easy log forwarding, all of that is now tightly integrated uh, actually with Azure, and I, I can do all of this from the marketplace. So that was it. Um, hope this was useful as always. Um, have a happy Halloween, and until next time, take care.